Hello, my name is Emily Steele and I will be your professor this summer for Theater Appreciation, which is a class that's taught 100% online. And um, thank you for choosing me to take this class. I know you could have taken art or music, um, but I am a huge fan of theater and it's a great culmination of all of the arts put together. So. I hope that by the end of the course you have some of the enthusiasm for theater that I have. I will have um, accomplished my goal. So one of the first questions you're probably asking is how much work is this going to be? Um, a lot of people go into an online class maybe thinking that it's going to be easier. Um, that's not usually the case. In fact, sometimes it can be a little bit harder and let me tell you why. Uh, not necessarily that I'm going to arbitrarily hand you more work, that's not what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to be there to hold your hand. If, um, you know, if you're having uh, a lot of fun at the beach and it might just slip your mind to get a quiz done on time and I'm not there in person to say, hey, we missed you in class last week uh, because I'm, you know, I'm not going to be physically there with you. So um, do what you have to do to get organized. I did an entire certificate program online through um, Minnesota. Never been to Minnesota, but I have an entire uh, certificate from that school because I needed to go to school full time and work full time, which I know is what many of you are doing. And some of you probably have vacations planned this summer. Vacation away. It's not going to probably get into any sort of daily um, schedule, but I would challenge you to set an alarm, set some time aside, uh, if not every day, every other day and say this is the time that I've carved out to work on my class because if you let it build up until Sunday when that due date is there's a good chance it could get ahead of you. Those of you who are seasoned online um, students forgive if I've talked down to you but I just feel this need to sort of say all these things on the front end because I advise as a professor and I have a lot of students who come in who fail online classes and I really hate to see that um, and it's usually because um, they weren't as intentional as they could have been about their scheduling so get your calendar take the schedule that um, I've posted there put those dates on your calendar make sure that you're keeping up with your work in fact uh, there's nothing that says you can't work ahead. You know, you have a couple uh, weeks till your first assignment, but maybe you want to go ahead and get all the way up through chapter four finished. Maybe you know that you want to go on vacation around July 4th. You want to make sure you um, get all of your work done up to that point so that you can sit back and enjoy your vacation. So um, all of that to say, here's what you can kind of expect. So the first week I'm asking you to watch a documentary and then take a quiz specifically over that documentary. I've created a uh, worksheet for you called the Fa Shaw Festival Worksheet. That's not something that you have to turn in to me. It just helps you focus because the documentary can kind of seem very vague and so I just wanted you to sort of be able to focus in on what is testable material. So um, if you want to print off that worksheet and fill it in as you watch and then you can use that worksheet as you take the quiz. Now um, many of you uh, may really get frustrated with the fact that I don't allow you to see the answers to the questions you miss. So some of your online teachers may allow you to see which question you answered wrong and um, what the right answer was. Well, um, these exact same questions are the ones that are on the final exam and unfortunately in the online environment we have a lot, a lot, a lot of cheating. And so in order to discourage um, cheating, in order to encourage you to double check your own work, I will not allow you to see the answers to the questions you missed. So, um, you know, make sure that you're taking your time as you take your quiz. I will not be there to look over your shoulder to see if you have your book open or your notes open. Um, the thing that I would tell you about and we'll talk about this more in just a minute is that your final exam is proctored. It'll be taken at Motlow 
on the computer with a proctor in the room making sure that you don't have your book or your notes. So if you want to make it easy on yourself and pass a quiz with flying colors, um, okay, but remember you're studying up for a final exam that covers all of the semester's material. I kind of think of these quizzes as just many little times to study for the final exam. Uh, you can, there's only 10 questions, um, you know, and as you study, remember what was that material because that will be on the final exam. So final exam is closed book, closed notes, just you and the computer, what did you learn? They're not going to be random questions. What color did uh, so-and-so's shirt in Hamlet? You know, that's not the kind of question I'm going to ask. It'll be basic content. But if you have been relying on the book too much or not really studying as we go along, uh, that's 100 points of your grade is that final exam. So um, I would challenge you to close your book, to close your notes. And if you make an 8 on a quiz, that's not as big a deal as making um, a 50 on your final exam, right? So a look at the weightedness of those grades and know that quizzes are important, but they're only a means to an end really of you beefing up for that final exam. Oh, and those are pretty much every week. Like I said, there's the quiz over the first documentary and then the first chapter. So you kind of have two quizzes due for your first module. But um, discussion questions, I would ask you to wait and do the discussion question after you've watched the lecture. Some of you, because the discussion question can be a little bit easier than the other parts, you may be tempted to work ahead. Okay, I'll just go ahead and knock out all my discussion questions on the second day of class. I would challenge you not to do that. First of all, I give you instructions. So for example, you have to write a monologue in your playwriting chapter. I give you directions for the entire lecture in playwriting. So I want you to take that advice before you sit down and answer that discussion question. When you do sit down to write your discussion question, make sure that you've read every person's post before you. I don't want you to give the exact same answer as somebody else. It needs to be original. It needs to be well thought. Feel free to build on what other people are saying. Uh, you know, I agree with Monique. I think that she's right in this, but here's where I differ in my opinion. That sort of articulate, intelligent, um, informed uh, sort of discussing is what I want to see. I don't want to see you just um, plopping an answer down and running away. So, um, Your first paper will be due at midterm and that will be an analysis of a supplementary text. So on your syllabus you'll see um, Theater, the brief version by Robert Cohen, 10th edition. The other book you'll see there is Joe Turner's Come and Gone. Um, I have by August Wilson. You do not have to have any certain edition. If you want to check it out of the library, if you want to get the, um, you know, version that's a play script or the version that's in an anthology of a lot of August Wilson plays, whatever the cheapest way for you to get that play is fine with me because you're only going to give me act and see numbers and that's the same through everything. So you'll read that play and then you will psychoanalyze one of those characters and I have um, the questions there for you to answer about the character that you choose. So. Uh, make sure that you go ahead and get that play early on, borrow it uh, from the library or from a friend or buy it. Yeah, it shouldn't be very expensive. But there are two texts required for this class. The second paper is a live production critique. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to buy a ticket to a local theater here in Middle Tennessee. It can be um, a community theater. You know, if you live in Tullahoma, feel free to click on that Jackson uh, Performing Arts Center. Uh, South Jackson, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, feel free to go to South Jackson and see Rent or whatever's showing. Uh, if you live in Nashville, feel free to um, go to a street theater production, which is staged in a high school this year, I think. Or if you live in Cannon County they're doing um, bring it on I think this season so um, wherever you live feel free to go to your local theater um, 
I put that in, as a second module because I want you to go ahead and be purchasing those tickets, saving that money. I know a lot of college students are low on funds. That's not going to be an excuse. It's part of your payment for the class is going to buy this ticket and sitting in that seat. Um, I know myself uh, just about a month ago, you know, I have a newborn baby and I had to pay for a sitter and I had to pay for two tickets to the theater, you know, gas to get there. It, it can be an ordeal for some of us who don't get out as much as we used to. So go ahead and be planning now to go see a live production critique, uh, a live production while you're um, taking the class. You may not see uh, write a critique over a play that you saw last year. It needs to be a play that you're seeing in Middle Tennessee within the time of this class. Uh, you know, it cannot be um, a play you've seen formerly or a play you watch digitally. It needs to be a live show. So it needs to be at least two hours long. It doesn't need to be a short play. Um, I think, for example, the South Jackson link that I had had a Robin Hood musical. You would want to call the box office and make sure that Robin Hood musical is in a one act because it's a children's play, so it might be shorter. I want you to see a substantial piece of theater with an intermission and uh, with plenty of information for you to feedback on. So, um, uh, I know <laughs> uh, that it can be um, a lot of hassle, but trust me, it's one of the requirements of the state. It is an important part of the course, so make sure that you go through those websites, find a play that suits you. Uh, you know, there's musical theater, there's straight theater, there's uh, children's plays if you want to take your child or uh, more mature content if you're going to go see rent for example make sure to plan you have to be 18 or older so uh, think about what you want to see take some time and uh, take a friend who would enjoy that experience take a hot date take somebody else from the class if you want to uh, carpool together but make it happen so um, I will ask you to flex your uh, creativity uh, muscle. I want you to actually draw a costume when we get to the costume design section and uh, you can just take a picture of it with your phone and email it to me uh, or you can scan it in if you'd rather do that. You can fax it to me, you can slide it under my office door, whatever works for you. But just be thinking about what technology you have available if you're specifically no, I have trouble with um, technology. You may want to go ahead and start emailing me about how to do that costume rendering or talking to your local librarian see if she can help you on your site uh, as far as getting that costume rendering to me I need to make sure you get it to me by the deadline not two weeks later so as I said um, you need to register for a final exam in person um, and I put it midterm a time for you to go online and do that it's the last day of class and uh, it is proctored. It is um, you alone with a computer, no phone a friend, no open textbook, no notes. Uh, it's about 30 questions and they will be questions that you've seen before. They're questions from the quizzes so no surprises, no new information um, and that will not be graded on a curve. I'm, I'm just going to warn you now uh, a lot of people have trouble with this final exam um, but it's only part of the course you have those paper grades that are also heavily weighted so um, best of luck in that area and we'll go over how to register for the final exam closer to the time. So what is in a module? you'll see that each chapter is broken into what I call a module and I kind of encourage you to read the chapter watch my lecture video so this format right now where you're hearing my voice and you're seeing what's on the screen that's how every chapter I will have a lecture um, and then watch the videos so I may have a link to a YouTube video for you to watch of a Broadway musical that I, we're going to talk about for the class it may be a link through the library website so you want to make sure that you um, register for, through the library if you haven't already uh, then I'll ask you to usually post a discussion for some of the chapters you only have like one discussion every few chapters especially towards the end when we're really heating up there uh, and then there are those two papers sometimes there's an activity like writing a monologue or um, you know the costume rendering 
And then before you take the assessment, this is really the heart of it, before you take the assessment, make sure that you take the time to look at the terms that I say are testable material, you know, review, and then also take a moment to look at that checklist, because remember I can ask you questions about the the videos that supplement as well as my lecture and what's in the book. So take a moment to look at the checklist and make sure you've done everything before you take that assessment. Um, you know, I really, my heart breaks when students call and say, I was halfway through the test and then I realized I didn't do this or then my internet went out or, you know, we can help you to a certain extent, but please do everything that you can to be prepared for that assessment before it comes. So, uh, <laughs> Um, some of you've had me in class before because I teach uh, speech as well as theater and you know that this is something that's really really important for me um, I teach communication theory and so I truly believe in respecting and being kind to one another um, especially in a digital format because what happens and often if you don't look somebody in the eye it's a lot easier to be disrespectful or rude I never get disrespectful emails from my students students that I teach on ground, who I see face to face, who I know them by name when I see them. But for some reason, um, online classes, it's so much more susceptible um, f for you to be rude to me <laughs> or to be rude to each other. And I, I just want to warn you that um, any of we online teachers are not going to respond well to that. Um, I am always going to try to get back with you uh, within 24 hours if you email me. I'm always going to try to be here for you and work through any kind of problem that you have. Uh, so please be patient. Um, please avoid being disrespectful. Um, if you're accused of plagiarism and you want to meet with me in person to talk about it, I would be happy to do that. Um, but please, please, please um, be kind to each other on the boards, be overly nice, try to avoid um, any kind of disrespect because I still, this is just like a regular classroom, I reserve the right to um, remove you from the class and I also reserve the right to change the schedule, anything that happens during the semester. So. Please be patient with me. I'll try to be patient with you. Please give me the benefit of the doubt. I will try to give you the benefit of the doubt. Email me if you have any problems. I created this course myself and it is fallible. <laughs> there will be YouTube links that will disappear. There will be um, errors, I guarantee you. And uh, I totally take full responsibility. I will work with you. Just make sure that you keep the communication open and uh, let me know what your problems or concerns are. Uh, as I said, I'm available for office appointments if you'd like to come meet with me at any time this semester. If you're having trouble, I'm here for you. Uh, I really appreciate you signing up for this course. I hope that you enjoy it, and as always, thank you for listening.